Welcome back again to the Batcave channel. Last session of the day, none other than the founder of the Messici, largest tech community on the island, Jackie. What are you talking about, Jackie? Well, I'm going to play a little bit Rockstar and I'm going to take an interesting topic from the past, which in in times of the pandemic, I think is um, has become more and more relevant, um, especially when I look into my uh, timelines on social media, uh, particularly on LinkedIn. It's pretty amazing that um, with the ability that people are um, staying more time at home, uh, working remote, um, I see an increase of actual certifications because there's the chance that um, with um, having more time, uh, the lack of uh, the daily commute, um, that there is more time to actually spend into personal growth, into into learning, and uh, yeah, taking a, a leap of faith, and then uh, sitting for for an online exam. Speaking about that, um, Shevin, what's your experience with certifications? Yeah, definitely. I've also been doing quite some certifications in the past. Um, I don't remember how much I did a bunch of, I think, data certifications, Azure, and developer certifications. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm currently working towards the Android one. And I've been involved in the Google Africa scholarship program and very right. nice community. I spent most of my time during the pandemic to work with this community and to learn about uh, Android and I'm now at the project phase and looking forward to progress in that area. Yeah, that's actually interesting uh, that you mentioned that the program <laughs> <laughs> because um, I'm also in there. Um, Unfortunately, not for not as a learner, but but one of the program assistants. So I'm I'm monitoring your progress. I keep an eye on you that you're learning properly, and uh, that you, well, let's see, crossing fingers, make it uh, to the next phase coming up end of the month. Yeah. All exactly. right. And I I really like the way like like that you mentioned about the commute time. I think mm -hmm. like working remotely and the lockdown really helps people to get more time to invest in learning like for me it's really a gain of like maybe one or two hours per day and it's mm -hmm. really really good so all right let's dig in let me quickly introduce myself my name is Jochen Kirstetter also better known under the allies uh, jockey um, I'm originating from Germany and since about now almost no, more than 13 years I'm um, living in Mauritius. Um, during the time here, I'm a software developer by heart, and I have also a great passion to um, talk about software development, uh, IT topics, uh, technology. Uh, I mean, with the, the confirm, uh, with the current developers conference, um, this is kind of expressing, you know, my hobby, <laughs> my passion for for this field, and um, I have to say that um, in regards to to certifications, is that um, I started. I think I reach, I received more, or I managed to to pass my first uh, professional exams back in two thousand four. Uh, unfortunately, they have been uh, retired since then. And uh, in between, I actually, yeah, let it slip a little bit. But since about two, three years, I'm uh, really more active um, into the scenario about um, taking a different approach. Because um, in the end, or let's say in general, is, is, is my opinion a certification that you sit and go for an exam should be based on um, practical knowledge, um, not based on, uh, you know, reading, studying books and, you know, um, 
being not exposed um, to to the subject at all. And this is what I'm going to talk about uh, in regards to this this aspects that you should consider to go for certification in order then to um, confirm what you already know, what you um, already practice. So it's not just on, you know, that you that you, that you are a good learner, that you can memorize things. Of course, question number one that comes into your mind in, in one's mind is why should I actually take those obstacles, those um, pain uh, uh, um, points in, in order to go back to learning. Uh, you know, you, you might be quite happy that you are done with school, that you're done with university. And why would you, why should you go back to, to start learning again? Um, first of all, it's, it's in my opinion is that being in IT, um, is a daily learning experience. Whether you are in software development and you are expo you are exposed to to new um, um, patterns, if you get software requirements uh, that you need to to uh, implement for for um, for a sprint uh, that you are assigned to, um, whether you have to set up um, system administration or network infrastructure, you always kind of learning um, the bits and pieces and you are compared you are um, um, exposed to these kind of uh, activities there are also other benefits in regards to pro professional um, certifications which um, to my opinion are interesting in regards to your personal growth um, you're not actually learning or going for the exam in regards to the fun factor. The thing is also that uh, according to a um, study by um, IDC is or Pearson View in their uh, survey about IT certifications, they actually got a result that almost 65% of um, exam taker or certification taker um, experienced and received uh, a positive impact on their professional image uh, among peers at the company, among peers in their community, or even, let's say, on, on, a, on a global um, standard, that by showing that you are capable to, to um, confirm your, your knowledge, that actually it has the, the positive benefit uh, for you as well, that it comes back to you in order then to be able to say, okay, um, this is something that is actually happening. In regards to um, um, cloud um, activities and cloud certifications, there's another study that has been done by this time by IDC, uh, contracted by Microsoft, that um, by next year, job opportunities in the cloud computing or in IT positions will cover about 38% uh, or our IT positions um, will be cloud related. So going and looking into possibilities about how to get certified uh, in regards to Microsoft Azure, um, Google Cloud Platform or Amazon AWS um, definitely gives you a head start if you are looking into possibilities to either uh, see a career change or it also uh, another nice side effect is that by proving that you have actual knowledge that you can that you confirmed it by certification is that a lot of people then actually mentioned that they um, had the possibility to negotiate a salary increase for up to 20 percent i mean that's one fifth of your current salary that you can top up uh, just by proving that you have practical knowledge, that you certified yourself, and that you are in the business, that you are too, you know, going towards being an expert in your field. So that's definitely not an uh, opportunity to to pass by. What are the other reasons to go for certification? 
Well, I mentioned it several times now. Uh, you get industrial certification, whether it's, it is by Cisco, uh, IBM, uh, PMI, um, Microsoft, uh, Google, Amazon. Um, one of the things that you should take in consideration here is that those exams have been created by subject matter experts. They have been vetted uh, to uh, the latest trends in regards to uh, personal development. And with that is also the situation that an exam that you take, for example, here in Mauritius, maybe in South Africa, uh, maybe in Kenya, it is exactly the same content that somebody in Europe, North America, Australia would actually sit for, which means there is no um, regional difference. If you are capable to, to um, pass an exam, it does not matter where you are located because um, the content of the exam is identical wherever it is. It is worldwide on the same standard. Um, your certificate at the end of the day has the same value than anybody else in the rest of the world. Which also is very interesting then in this case that, uh, that you can gain um, your own um, learning material that you can put together, you get a certain degree of independence because um, the internet is a huge playground. Uh, whether you go out, um, do, do a quick Bing, whether you do a quick a Google search, um, you will find lots and lots of information, um, especially in public repositories, open source repositories on GitHub. Uh, there's lots of information available. Um, you are not bound to, to a set of, of specific books, even though that they are very valuable, but you can gather your own information together. You can say, okay, I like to, I'm, I'm more, um, let's say you're more like an, an, a visual type of learner, which means that you can go forward with some kind of um, video material. You can reach out to um, platforms like LinkedIn, uh, Linda, um, Udemy, Udacity, or even Pluralsight that you can say, or Egghead, if it's more for regarding front-end development. So you're not restrict restricted to a single source of information. You can uh, mix material. Um, you can actually um, sweep to a bunch of tutorials that you find on various online blogs. Lots of vital information. Um, also, since the beginning of the year, I've, I'm seeing more and more posts where actually um, people put blog articles together with additional learning resources from different areas, whether it is um, uh, GitHub repositories that you can actually uh, get code samples about a specific technology, whether it is PDFs, of course, um, copyright uh, not being infringed, uh, or whether it is actually video material on YouTube. There is so much stuff and even uh, conference talks like the ones that we are producing now during the whole day um, can be helpful in order to prepare yourself for a specific um, um, certification. The other aspect that um, plays into, into, into your hand, as I mentioned, is that certificates are globally recognized. So, um, if you apply for a job at a company and they, they, they specify that you need to have certification in networking for cloud computing, you can show that you have your certificates by Cisco, that you have your CCNA. Um, you can show that you have uh, networking in, in for a specific uh, cloud provider. Um, they will be uh, accepted in such a way because they are coming from, from a company and not from a single um, educational uh, uh, institution. Uh, because there you might actually wonder is, um, do I have to go to a university with a high reputation? Or, you know, if you can't afford it financially, um, or constraints about traveling, uh, you are not in a disadvantage compared to other people.
And uh, with that, this is actually one of the uh, interesting aspects that it helps you to go forward with it. As soon as you are starting with your certificates, you can really um, distinguish yourself um, compared to your to your peers, uh, to compare to other people on the market. Um, it's also that while you prepare yourself, you are developing hopefully a, a mindset in regards to continuous learning. Um, because in IT, I mean, if you are two weeks, two months out of the game, it's like you stepping into a new universe. You need to constantly uh, catch up with, with some news. Uh, you need to be aware that there are new uh, steps coming out. If, for example, if I take front end, which is a vast area into consideration, um, you can say maybe like a little joke, um, but it's serious that every two, three months, there is a new JavaScript framework coming onto the market that has fantastic criteria, that has fantastic capabilities. But, you know, it's also about seeing that you look into, into the fundamentals uh, about certain uh, development aspects or, or network activities. Last but not least, when you're certified, you can extend your search in regards of the job market. You are no longer bound um, to your your local vicinity. You're not bound to the surrounding of your of your city, to the surrounding of your island, uh, of your country, like here in Mauritius. We are a very small island. I mean, there are there are cities in in Africa that are way larger than than Mauritius in terms of um, land area, in terms of population. But if you start building up your your uh, per, per, your your professional reputation, you are actually rising in the job market. You get more interesting for companies in order then to look into you and to hire you. And I had it just last week. There was a fantastic um, um, success story from from a, from an Azure uh, Microsoft MVP in regards to Azure. The 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 young uh, the fellow started like three years ago, literally from scratch and looking into Azure. But by continuous learning experience, um, he built up practice knowledge, he played projects, he developed things, he experienced, um, he got uh, some assignments on the job, and he got awarded by Microsoft for his activities as an MVP. And just beginning of the month, even though that he is in the UK, he got um, a job offer from a company in the Netherlands, which is like um, the global partner uh, with Microsoft. So he's now on a very high uh, position in a, a highly reputable uh, company in regards to Azure. And I mean, this is just the, the, the kind of success stories that you can see when you focus, when you, when you start learning, when you um, confirm your practice knowledge with exams and you go out of your comfort zone. Okay, where to start? Um, quite frankly, every journey of a thousand um, miles starts with a single step. And the, uh, the question is also, what is it that you should know about professional exams? There are actually different types um, in order to be able to prepare yourself or even then to take your exams. Um, the most classic one until March this year was that you would book an appointment with a test center like Pearson View, uh, which might be an authorized um, a test center for um, company specific certifications. Uh, here in Mauritius, there are actually quite a number, I think about 12 or 15. They have an online map, so it's actually pretty simple that you can look it up whether you have a local test center in your surrounding. Um, with that, you would actually then see about the exam that you want to take, uh, book an appointment with them. Usually they're offering that you can go there with 
15 minutes, half an hour slots. And um, so it would be very classic that you, uh, on the day of the certification, that you go there, show up roughly half an hour earlier, uh, you prove with, with um, um, your uh, ID, uh, ID card, your passport, uh, etc., cetera, that, uh, that it's you and not somebody else that you're sending that takes the exam uh, in, in, uh, as a proxy for you. And then you sit down, you get, your, you get everything uh, provided by the test center. And even if you have any kind of issues, you can easily then ask for guidance and assistance with um, the employees at the test center. Since March, the popularity of so-called online proctored exams um, has skyrocketed uh, with the situation about working remote, spending more time at home, um, the lack of daily commute um, is a situation that you can actually use your own machine, your own laptop, your desktop PC, your Mac, then in order to conduct um, the online certification. Uh, what happens there is that um, when you sign up, you have to install uh, a little software application on your machine that is literally uh, monitoring the processes and background services on your machine. And uh, in case that you might, um, you know, pop up a browser because you are feeling that you would like to look up something, it actually would raise a red flag and you might be disqualified for your, for your um, exam and you fail. But it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you need to have a webcam, you need to have a proper microphone, and uh, the webcam is also um, open the whole time. And uh, somebody will actually watch you remotely while you are taking your exam. Um, I've done it already twice. Um, I also know that Sherwin uh, took online proctored exam. I think we can uh, talk about that later in the Q&A part. And there are actually quite some funny aspects like you're not allowed to talk to yourself. Um, you're not supposed to cover your hand. Um, if it, if you're looking at a specific spot all the time, it raises suspicion uh, by the person that monitors you. And I think they might even run a, a little bit of AI in regards to, you know, face expression and, and, and things like that. So that you're actually not cheating, like, you know, having the notes uh, on your hand like you did it maybe at school <laughs> some years back. And last but not least, but this seems to be nowadays very archaic is also the possibility that you can use opportunity in classrooms um, which is actually quite uncommon and with the current pandemic i'm not sure that um, classroom activity classroom activities are going to have a um, safe future but we will see so uh, development is going forward um, online proctored has one major risk because you cannot be disturbed by anyone. So if somebody comes in the room, you fail. If you have to leave the room because you want to, you need to rush out for a, a, a restroom, you fail. And it's, it's, you know, the criterias are way more rigid with online proctored exams. But I mean, if you have the surrounding, that you can enjoy that, that you have quietness, let's say in the evening hours or in the morning hours, like the kids are at school, your partner is already at work or something like that, that it might be a cool opportunity to go for that way. Again, you are in, in the safety of your home um, and you can enjoy going forward with that. Then into the, getting into the details, independent, whether you go to a test center or if you do it online proctored, there are literally um, two types uh, of, of certification of exams uh, to take. Uh, sometimes you might even get a combination of both. Uh, most common is a situation that you get an exposure to a catalog of multiple choice questions. 
um, I can speak for, for Microsoft as well as for Google exams, is that you get a set between, let's say, 40 to 60, uh, maybe up to 70 questions, uh, different caliber. And um, then it's like you get um, a scenario um, described uh, with a couple of requirements, with a couple of constraints, and then you get your questions in regards to, okay, in order to solve that problem, uh, how would you solve it? How would you actually um, take care of certain things? And you get a selection of answers or uh, um, yeah, that you can choose from. Sometimes you need to bring them into the right sequence. Uh, sometimes you have uh, the possibility to select more than one correct answer. And funny of all, sometimes it even happens that they are asking you for the best or the optimum um, solution, even though that two or three answers are correct. But, you know, it might be with cost saving in, reg uh, in regards to cost saving. It might be in regards to performance or other aspects so that you need to choose the right one out of three or four correct answers. So it can be quite challenging and you need to really concentrate on the questions themselves. So take your time and um, don't rush through it. The other aspect that is now, um, that has been established already since years, for example, when you, when you go for Linux certifications, uh, like uh, Red Hat, um, um, Certified Engineer, uh, Certified System Administrator, um, or, or in general, LF, LF certifications from the Linux Foundation, is that you get um, tasks like um, here's a machine, log into it, um, install the web server, um, and make an, an, a, a, a website that you are uh, replicated, that you clone from a public repository, and make it available on your machine. So this might be then these kind of task-oriented um, aspects of an exam and that's why I think it is pretty interesting that you actually know your subject, that you practiced it, that you, in worst case, that you did code labs or that you did certain, you know, possibilities where you have to type commands, where you have to write configuration files, where you need to adjust configuration files in order then to achieve the requested outcome of a specific task. And interestingly, um, some of those tasks are actually having multiple steps and they build on top of each other. So you need to be sure that you know your subject and that you can actually perform those tasks like for, you know, typical thing for system administration on Linux, create a user, assign it to uh, assign certain permissions on it, uh, set the quota on the account in regards to uh, file system usage and other kind, kinds of aspects. And this is also coming more and more into fashion uh, with the situation about cloud computing. Uh, in regards, for example, um, the latest Microsoft certificates, there you might actually have at the end um, a block of 10 to 15 uh, tasks where they are actually asking you to have a temporary account, log into the Azure portal and perform tasks like um, setting up a Kubernetes cluster using um, Azure Kubernetes service and things like that. So it really comes down that you know the subject, that you have practical experience, because otherwise, just with um, information from paper or from videos, um, you might um, fall on your nose if you don't know where certain things are accessible, uh, how you can uh, run certain commands in order to, to be able to allocate and complete the tasks. <clears throat> in regards to certifications, or let's say, um, what is the cost factor? What is the investment into your career? And don't, don't get me wrong, I, I, I really, 
insist that you consider this not as an expense, but as an investment. Because don't forget, you might say, okay, you have to, um, you might consider that A, you pay for an exam, the exam's fees yourself. Um, the other aspect might be that um, you talk to your current employer and say, hey, listen, what is the development um, aspects within the company? Uh, I would like to grow. Um, are you offering uh, learning programs? Are you uh, offering subventions for um, certifications? And you might go forward with that and, and see for it. Interesting as well is what you should understand. Those exams are bound to your name. They are bound to your personal account. So even at a later stage that you might like to change career, that you might change um, employer, nothing to worry about. These are your exams. And the interesting part is also as a, as a sales argument is that when you have a certification, there's a benefit for the company because they can then reach uh, a potential partner status with, this, with that particular vendor. So Microsoft Partner Program, Google Partner Program, they all have constraints that two or more employees uh, are certified in specific uh, exams in order that the company can reach a higher level of partnership. So, I mean, there are clearly chances that you can get a paid exam by your employer. The other thing that you should take into consideration is that uh, usually when you go onto the website, it's like you see a certain number, usually in US dollar, don't be scared. Check the country. In 99% of the cases, I'm pretty sure that the price tag for your country, like here in Mauritius, is a completely different one, like for the US or for Europe. And uh, for example, for Microsoft, I can tell you it by heart, it's a situation that is about 50%. So a regular exam in the USA, in Europe, you would pay $165, maybe 150 euro. Um, but here in Mauritius, the price goes down to, to $80. Some exams, depending on the level, might be even cheaper. I think the fundamental exams, they are already, they are, they are even a little bit less. I think they might be around uh, 47 or something. Anyway, you get the idea. If you go for, if you want to, if you decide to go for an exam, check the price tag for your country. Um, also watch the different vendors because especially now in the period of the pandemic that they see the benefit as well that people are more at home, that they have more time to learn and actually eventually sit for exams. Um, check the official vendor blocks because they running promotions like crazy. And again, from own experience, I can tell you last year, I had a super fantastic chance that actually I went forward for the uh, Google certification for Associate Cloud Engineer, which normally would cost $125. Um, first of all, Google offered it as part of a bundle that I already directly got um, 25, uh, no, 20% discount. So $25 directly cut off. It would only cost me $100. And then they said, okay, if you book the exam, and you pass it within a certain period, at the time it was 12 weeks, you will actually get reimbursed with a voucher of $100 in the Play Store. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Yes, I spent $100, but I got $100 back on, on the Play Store. So whether I'm using that to purchase apps, games, or even hardware, uh, doesn't make a difference. Um, Effectively, I didn't pay anything for for the Google certification, and yeah, it was good fun. And even now, they're offering discounts like thirty percent, forty percent, fifty percent. So keep an eye on what is what is possible in regards to these bundles as well. There are other options that you might get a bundle at a, at a, at a discounted price, where you get a second chance. Meaning, if you fail the exam in the first run. 
you get a voucher that you can sit for exactly the same one um, for a second time free of charge. Um, or the, you might get a bundle where you get um, a practice test. And I mean a real practice test with 50 or 60 questions that are very close to the real deal that you might have um, in, in, in the, the actual exam. And last but not least, if you're a student, reach out to your academic institution because as a student, you get automatically the um, 50% or even more on certain uh, certifications. I think for Microsoft it's 50%. Others, you need to check out if it's with Cisco. I know, for example, here in Mauritius, some of the universities have partner programs with Cisco so that actually as a student, it's part of your curriculum during the year. And in the end, um, you might get Cisco certifications like CECNA and stuff like that. So check it out. Don't miss that. How to prepare or how to go move forward for a successful outcome? Well, I can only speak from my own experience and clearly it starts with practicing. Um, check on the internet whether you can find um, code labs, uh, whether you can find hands-on labs that you can go step by step through. Um, on the other side, if it's in regards to cloud computing, all the major um, vendors offer you that you can sign up for a free account that you get credits for a certain period. For example, on, on Microsoft Azure, you get $200 credits during the first 30 days. Um, on, on Google Cloud Platform, you can you receive $300 valid for 12 months. Uh, I've just seen it on Amazon AWS. When you sign up and you describe them, you can apply for up to $300 of credits. So use this opportunity with a free account and that you get an environment that you can practice with, even that you can set up a home lab and, and, and other kind of aspects. Uh, if you go for Linux certification, install VirtualBox, um, install Linux on your machine. With Windows 10, use the Windows subsystem for Linux, get yourself familiar into Linux command and things like that. Otherwise, have a plan, have a schedule block your weekly activities for a learning unit. Like, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour in the morning, maybe um, half an hour, an hour in the evening. Um, Shevin mentioned it earlier that actually on Saturdays, he blocks like six, seven hours um, to, just for learning. And, and, you know, practice, practice, practice. The other thing is that for each exam, you usually get a very extensive study guide make a checklist, take the exciting exam guide, make a checklist about all the topics that you are supposed to cover and at least go into each subject once, multiple times. And when you're feeling confident, just take it off from your, check from your checklist, have daily goals, have weekly goals. And at the end, schedule your exam, Give it a little of time, like one week ahead at least or something like that, and take a good night's rest the night before so that you are really relaxed and not too nervous when you are going for the actual test taking. <clears throat> I'd like to show you um, a quick um, sample how then, how when you did your exam, you get your result back. In this case, it's actually from a Microsoft um, certification. And this would qualify like a just pass. But you can see here that um, the, the different um, um, areas where uh, about technologies, um, you get a feedback um, how well or not well you answered the questions. And uh, this can really vary. Um, other vendors like Google, it's a situation that you take your exam and then you can start biting your fingernails because it might take a week, 
or maybe two weeks time till you get your official result, whether you passed or not, and you won't get a report back. And so check it out how it works with different vendors. And it's, it's actually a pretty interesting story as well to go forward with it. In case that you fail, I find these score reports very helpful because then you see exactly in which areas you need to put more effort in, in order then to, to go for the retake. Again, retake options are valid, uh, are there. Check out if there are voucher bundles, if there are second chances. Most of the time it's possible. Take also in consideration that there is a, how do they call it, um, um, chill out period. So certain exams or with certain vendors, uh, you need to wait at least 24 hours until you can take the same exam again. Sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's two weeks, and the period builds up if you say, if, uh, the more times you fail. So I think if you fail the first time, you need to wait 24 hours. If you fail the second time, you need to wait a week and, and so on, sometimes even up to six months. So check it out with the conditions. Everything is normally very well explained on the when their websites. The other thing, which I already mentioned across this talk, um, there are lots of possibilities uh, where you can actually find material. Uh, like here, MSCC, like this conference, this is a great uh, resource for information. Uh, you have a chance to actually uh, ask um, the speaker. Uh, you can reach out to others um, as a user group there is always a possibility that there's a Discord channel, there's a Slack channel, there is maybe a Facebook group. Um, early on uh, is the situation that um, Shevin and I, we are participating in, in an online uh, learning program, which is called GATS uh, 2020, organized by uh, Andela in cooperation with Pluralsight and Google, uh, where you actually get um, for a specific period, access free of charge to certain material um, like videos, like labs, like code bases, that, and you receiving mentorship by mentors in the program. But even then, on the job, even on the job, you can reach out to somebody and say, hey, listen, you are you know, the person to go to about .NET Core, you are the person to go to about databases, um, would it be possible that we can sit together, you know, maybe half a week or during lunch breaks that you can explain me certain things so that I get a better understanding? Um, the universe of online material is infinite. Look for it, search for it. You will find tons and tons and tons of material. It's incredible. And it doesn't matter whether it's which vendor it is. I mean, Microsoft Learn as a new central platforms, they give you access to sandboxes on Azure. Uh, Google Code Labs covers the whole range from cloud computing, Android, Kotlin, um, web development, uh, even things like Google Maps, everything is covered. You will find a lot of, lot of information out of that. Yeah, how to stay motivated. Um, one of the things that, for example, worked for me in the past was about going forward with a challenge. Challenge yourself. Um, say, okay, if you want to go for a daily learning experience, um, book a certain time on your daily calendar, like, 15 minutes, um, and then take it, for example, to tweet about it. Yeah, uh, I'm learning today, or today I covered uh, networking on Amazon AWS, or um, today I was looking into uh, HTTP triggered um, Azure functions and stuff like that. Uh, tweet about it, use social media. You will be surprised about others that are in the same boat uh, with you, and there is this motivation factor as well that not maybe not at the beginning, but if you are you know be consistent and then people will pay, will pick it up and and go forward and might even cheer you up like yes, 
give you likes, give you retweets, maybe even provide you with additional resources and information that, hey, if you are struggling with that, have a look over there. That's a great blog article I read like two weeks ago. It helped me so much to go to go beyond a certain, um, you know, a mental break or mental barrier to, to actually then ace a certain topic. And with that, I'm almost at the end of my talk. Just quickly uh, to give you a, summer, a summary, um, certification, here's a selection of Microsoft, Cisco, Red Hat, Linux. Uh, I didn't add in uh, Google so far, but of course there are possibilities. Um, again, an exam is there to confirm your knowledge. Don't prove that you can memorize what is on paper. Be conversant with the material, know what is the technology about, because you will be surprised that even then for interviews, you can answer way easier and with, with, you know, with less stress. Exams are for your personal growth. It helps you to, to proceed, to progress in your career. Um, based on the fact that these are industry uh, certifications, they are based on international standards. An exam that somebody takes in um, Netherlands has the same value as somebody in Poland, somebody in South Africa, somebody in Nigeria, somebody in Singapore. It does not matter. It's the same, which then puts you on the job market you are directly above um, other peers that are not certified and you might get job opportunities out of the blue that you never dreamed about. And one last thing that I, that I would also like to mention is that since beginning of the year is that the large companies like Facebook, like Google, uh, I think even Microsoft goes into this direction that it is not really anymore about having a diploma or a degree or a graduation from university. You know, they are looking into uh, your skills in your abilities that you can actually solve problems, that you can provide solutions, that you know subjects, that you can really dig into it. And... Yeah, this might be also an interesting aspect to go forward with that kind of certifications. Um, even on the job, if you're not interested to change because you're feeling super happy where you are, an exam, a, a past exam, gives you a good pair of aces that you go to your HR department and say, hey, listen up. Um, how can we talk about salary? How does this work with my uh, performance report? You know, especially at the bank, there is performance report in other companies as well. I know there is a personal performance report to, that you need to do certain things throughout the year. And why not use and combine these kind of activities? And even as a student, while you are studying, uh, studying to get your uh, graduation, that you get your degree, Look into industry programs. It's a continuous learning experience, especially in IT. And with that, I reached the end of my session. I hope that the audience had um, a couple of um, interesting and informative minutes. And uh, please use the, seize the opportunity to provide feedback, tweet about the event on, on social media, um, show how you're learning, how you're enjoying the online shows. And yeah, Shevin, now coming back, do you have any questions? <laughs> I think you have some lots of very, very valuable information shared. Definitely it will help anybody going for certifications. So, so you mentioned about uh, beta exams. What's your experience with beta exams? Oh yeah, beta exams is it's it's actually challenging because at the time of the beta exams, is literally the situation that there is no pre-manufactured learning <laughs> material available. There, there is there is no. Um, content like okay here is a learning path particularly for that exam there is no book 
um, that you could purchase online uh, for <laughs> for a particular exam, and it's it's really like that. You rely a little bit uh, on on um, on your network of peers that you know you reach out to to blog posts where they collected um, resources and and learning material um, either on their blog posts or there are GitHub repositories. I mean, some of the most famous GitHub repositories are those uh, awesome lists and. Some of those awesome lists are actually specific for certain um, certifications. And there is a huge amount of material available, free of charge in most cases. And yeah, the better exams is really like um, you are um, jumping into the lake and you have to swim. You know how <laughs> to swim. So you need to know what what we are talking about because there is literally um, not enough material or it is widespread it's it's like you know uh, you jump into the lake and you need to um, construct your raft uh, with floating around wood and 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 you know uh, strings and in order then to you know climb up onto the boat and sail in safety. This is like how it feels when you go for better exams. Um, the interesting part with the better exams is also that you get an, uh, an additional time after the exam that you can actually provide feedback to the vendor. And um, your input has an impact on the final version uh, of the exam. And I find this pretty rewarding because um, I think last year I had this, earlier last year I had this, that you know certain feedback that was provided um, was, then, was then acknowledged by the vendor and then internally again discussed with um, subject matter experts. And there had been changes um, to the format or to the content of the exam. And that feels also pretty cool because you know that you helped creating um, a better certification experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I've done two of those. Yeah, it's quite very interesting process. Like you don't know what to expect. You just jump in and you do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so jumping Clary back just on Clarice was just, so let me just pick this up in the chat. Clarice was mentioning it that getting certification could also help boost one's confidence in their craft. Yes, um, at the beginning of the slides, I, I had a, a figure that like almost 65% um, of, of uh, people filling in a survey run by, by Pluralsight actually confirmed that uh, going for a certification and passing it. Um, increase their their personal uh, confidence their personal growth but also their reputation among their peers and, and co-workers so i mean this is definitely uh, a booster um for you personally so yeah thank you for mentioning it claris yeah and also for people who live on the island here like you've not been to a top university you are living on a remote island how do you know what you are doing is good? And yeah. passing a certification, it's the same thing like everybody is doing around the world. It's definitely, exactly. definitely a great confidence booster. Yeah. Sharon, how was your or how was your experience with the um, online proctored format? Is this something that you prefer <laughs> compared to test sender, or just give us a little bit of insight there? Because I know you've taken three, four online proctored exams so far. I absolutely love it <laughs> because I can do it at any point in time. I usually schedule my exams at 10 or 11 at night so I <laughs> can like get off work. I have some time to relax. Everybody's sleeping. Everybody everywhere's quiet. I just sit for like one or two hours and do my exam. I love it. But like at the beginning, it was a bit funny because you've got to take your laptop and turn it yeah. around the house and all the corners and things like that. But the last one I did it change. It's mm -hmm. like for Microsoft at least it change. You have an uh, you have an uh, an app or a link on your mobile phone. You open mm -hmm. it and you just take one photo of your desk like in front and at the back, 
and that's it. It's much, much okay. better now. And it's, it's amazing. Like I, I have to say, I, I try I, so far, I did two uh, online proctor exams and actually it was at the office. And I was almost, I was seriously in trouble <laughs> because at a certain time it was a situation that our cleaning service was banging on the door because she wanted into the room that I luckily I locked it but she was like well I want to enter here I want to clean and I'm like um, um, my um, my surveillance <laughs> my my proctor um, excuse me um, am I allowed to just say that she cannot come into the room. <laughs> no, you cannot talk to anybody. And I'm like, <laughs> whoa, okay, then I better zip my, my mouth and, and I don't take the risk about being, you know, disqualified and failing the exam. But it was a tense moment because, I mean, you're not taking this into consideration. And, um, you know, when you pay for your exams yourself, it's like, Wow, it's like throwing money out of the balcony and or in the, directly in the trash bin, and if you don't have a retake option. Uh, so I mean, this was a little bit tense for me, and quite frankly, I have to say, here at home, uh, it might be also difficult because it happens that the kids come down even during the night because they want to have a drink, a glass of water. So. <sighs> Even though that I would say I, I love the format, I'm in a difficult position that I might not be able to take more online product exams. And these are the risks that you might have. But yeah, if you are so, yeah, um, I you know, had, in, a, I had a, in a small a household. Similar, I had a similar situation um, in one of the exams. It's like, you know, sometimes you just talk to yourself, like trying to brainstorm yeah. with yourself. Run, 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 and run. I'm like, I'm just like, yeah, which one should you use? And, uh, and the, the proctor just came up. Hey, what are you doing? With whom are you talking? And they asked me to like put on the webcam and scan the room again. And yep. like, yeah, it, it might get stressful, but yeah, that's yep. it. I, yep. you, you're not allowed to mumble to yourself. Yeah, you, you, you're not yeah, allowed yeah. to have a, you're not allowed to have an expert exchange with yourself. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great evening and see you then hopefully on the stream tomorrow. Take care. Bye for yeah, now. See you. Also, Bye -bye. thank you to the audience. See you tomorrow, everyone.